Hardest part of building Rack Agent has always been the data pipeline, parsing PDFs, chunking text and setting up the vector database. What if I told you that the entire process is now obsolete? I'm going to show you how to build a WhatsApp chatbot using NA10 and Google Gemini file store. It allows you to upload raw documents and query them immediately without any manual embedding or retrieval logic. It's the simplest Rack stack that exists right now. So there are two different steps that we need to do in order to create this solution. First, we're going to have to create this WhatsApp AI agent that is connected to my Meta account. So every time you receive a message, it's going to come through this webhook. We're going to extract the message content, send the content to this AI agent. The response will be generated with the help of this OpenAI chat model. Once the response is received, we're going to respond back to the WhatsApp chat using this HTTP request. Next, we're going to have to create the Gemini file store. That's the place where we can upload the files that we want to use as part of this AI agent context. So once the file store is created, we can then select and upload the file. And then we can use this HTTP request node to query that file store. So once you receive a message from someone on the WhatsApp, the AI agent can use that file as part of the response generation. OK, so you might be asking, why use Google File Store instead of standard vector database like Superbase or Pinecone? Honestly, it comes down to three massive advantages. Simplicity, accuracy and cost. In a traditional setup, you have to build a complex pipeline. You need a document parser, then a text chunker to split it into small pieces, and then an embedding model to turn those pieces into numbers. And finally, a vector database to store them. With Google File Store, the entire pipeline is gone. You literally just upload the file. Google handles the parsing, the indexing, and the retrieval automatically. It's the ultimate lazy developer hack. With the standard setup using the vector database, you're effectively paying three separate bills for every single interaction. Before you can even store the data, you have the first bill to pay the AI to turn your text into numbers. You pay another bill for storage and read and write operations. A starter production tier on a super base is about $25 per month and more once you scale past the basics. And then you pay the third bill when you actually send the data to the chatbot to generate the answer. However, with the Google file storage method, you delete the bill one and two. You don't, don't pay for the embeddings because you don't generate them. You don't pay for the vector storage because Google holds the files for you. There are three different steps that you need to do in order to create a file store. One, you're going to have to create the file store location, which is the place where you're going to hold all the files. Two, you're going to have to select and upload the file onto this temporary location. And then three, you're going to have to move that file from the temporary location onto the file store that you have created in step one. So to get all the information on how to create the store, we need to go to this file search documentation on Gemini API. Scroll down to the file search store and here we need to copy this request, which is a post request. And as part of the body, we're going to pass the store name that we want to create. And if you don't have the Gemini API key already, you can get one from here. This will take you to this Google AI studio, which will allow you to generate brand new API key. Once you have this in place, all we have to do is copy this URL here, go back to NA10, paste it here. And then you also need to paste the Gemini API key. And I have created the reusable auth because we're going to be using it quite often when interacting with uh, Google APIs. So just paste the value here, put the name as key. For the headers, we need to specify the content type. And then for the body, we're just passing the name of the store that we want to create. And once you execute this, you will get this output back, which means the store has been created successfully. So to upload the file, you need to go to the file API documentation, scroll down to the upload file, copy this URL here, go back to the NA10, paste it here. This is the base URL that was referenced in the documentation. The method is post. We're passing the Gemini API key again, same headers, with the content type. For the body, we need to pass the name of the file that we have uploaded. And then once you execute steps, you're going to get the response back with the name of the file that has been uploaded, as well as the full location. 
And what's important to remember here, that that location is only temporary location, that it will hold the file for up to 48 hours. So if, if you don't move that file into the actual file store, it will disappear after two days. Lastly, we need to move the file onto the file store. So go to the files search store API, scroll down to the endpoint, and you're gonna have to copy this URL here. And the one thing that we're gonna have to replace is this section here with the actual name of the store that we have created in step one. So copy this URL, go back to the NA10, paste it here, and replace the name with this. And you can get that name from the actual step one, which is the name which we got from the response when we executed the initial step. So copy that name, paste it here, pass the Jimmy Nike, same headers. For the body, we just need to pass the name of the file, click execute steps, and the file has been moved from the temporary location onto the file store. So now that the file store is ready, let me quickly show you how to configure the WhatsApp. So first, you're going to have to create an application on the developers facebook.com, create a brand new application here. So you'll get an application ID and then configure the WhatsApp configuration. And in order to do that, you will have to paste the callback URL, which can be obtained using this webhook here. That's the URL. And this will allow us to establish the connection with the Meta API. So once the connection is established, just scroll down to subscriptions, find messages, subscribe to the messages API, and that will allow you to interact with WhatsApp by sending and receiving messages. And if you're interested in more detailed video, I have another video which shows you step by step how to create this for WhatsApp, Instagram, as well as the Messenger. So once we receive the message, we need to extract the most important details. In this case, it's from, which is the sender of the message. So we also know where to respond, as well as the content of the message. And the rest are a bit less relevant. We send that to the AI agent in a JSON format. And this AI agent also have the prompt which defines the behavior. You are a helpful assistant. You will receive a question in JSON format. Your primary source of truth is the query file store knowledge base. If the user questions require specific details, facts, or context found in the uploaded documents, you must query that file store before answering. If the question is general conversation, you do not need to query the files. Return your final answer as a JSON object, replacing the text value with the response. So this also specifies the output. So we receive output in the JSON format, which has the text and from, so we know where to respond. For the agent brain, we're using the OpenAI chat model. And the model that we're using is GPT-5 mini, which is more than enough for what we're trying to do here. For the chat memory is in Postgres. And for the context window length, we specify 10 which is the number of messages that the AI remember for the conversation context. And you can increase or decrease that number based on how much information you want the agent to remember. So next we have the custom tool that allows us to query the file store that we have just created. So this will make use of all the files that we have uploaded and it will try to respond from information from that file. The URL is similar. Again, we need to pass the Gemini API key, specify the headers, and for the JSON body, we need to first pass the query from the AI agent. And then for the tools, we just specify the location of the file store that it should use when looking for an answer. And if you have several files or several file locations, you can all pass it here because this parameter takes an array of elements. Finally, we have the output parser that specifies the format of the agent responses. And here we just pass the text, which is the response, and from, which is the destination for our text message. So now let's see this live step by step. I want to emphasize how quickly and easy it is to actually upload the file and then use the AI agent to ask some questions. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to this create new file store. I'm just going to unpin the previous response. Scroll down to the display name. I'm going to set the name of the file store. Click, click execute steps. And that's name of the new file store that we have created. I'm just going to pin that. 
So next we need to upload the file and for the actual file I'm going to be using this PDF that has 407 pages and the reason I've picked up such a big PDF is because the Google Gemini has a very large context window so it should actually be able to handle all this data and pick up the relevant information. So once this is uploaded I'm going to be try asking relevant questions from that document to see if it can retrieve appropriate data. So let's go ahead and upload this document choose the PDF, click submit. So this will get uploaded, moved on to the temporary location and finally moved on to the file store. For the actual testing, I'm going to be using Postman. Postman allows you to store, manage and um, test API requests. So in this case, I'm going to be hitting my NA10 instance using this post request and passing this JSON body. And the JSON body I've got from the Meta website. And if we look at the messages subscription, you can click on test. And here is the JSON body that I'm going to be sending with this sample data. And the only thing that you need to change is this text body here. So let's quickly test this. Execute workflow. Send request. Go back to NA10. We've received the message. It's been processed by AI. And then the response is sent back. So my message was, hi, how are you? And the response I get back is, hi, I'm doing well, thanks. How can I help you today? So now that we know everything is working, let's give it a quick test using the factual data. My first question is going to be, who discovered the first near Earth asteroid and what was it called? Execute workflow, send the request. This time it goes to the file store. And if we take a look at the file store, we have the query, which is the message that we have sent, and it has managed to find the response. And, it, and it's got some factual data with the name of the asteroid, the date, as well as the person that did it. And then if we go back to the PDF, the name is matched with the person as well as the date. So it has managed to retrieve the data successfully. So the next question I'm going to ask is going to require to cross-reference the facts. How does a NEAT program differ from Spacewatch in terms of sky coverage and limited magnitude? So again, it has managed to find the response. I'm not going to go through it. If you want to read it, just pause the video for a bit. But then if we take a look back at the document, the answer is on the page 151 and it's somewhere here in this document. So finally, I'm going to ask a question about policy and timeline. And this question requires the AI to pull information from two separate pages. When did NASA establish the Planetary Defense Coordination Office and what event in 2013 helped trigger its formation? So as you can see, it has managed to find the response and the question to this response lives on this page here, as well as the page 13, which means that the AI was able to find the information across both of those pages in order to answer a single question, which means it understands the document as a whole. You can also manage the file store using the Google API. There are several endpoints that you can use to do that. And this one allows you to list all the file stores by Gemini API key. So if you send the request, you will get this response back that contains the array of file search stores. And as you can see here, I've got two different file stores created. Here you have the name, when they have been created and updated, number of documents inside that store, as well as the overall size. And then if you take that name here, and send it onto another endpoint, you can list all the documents that are inside this particular file store. So the file store that we have used in this video um, has a single PDF document, which has the size of about four megabytes and it has been created recently. And then if you take this name and use it into other endpoint, you can get further information about the particular document, or you can delete that um, document from the file store. And you can also remove a file store if you no longer need it. 
However, first you have to remove all the documents that belong to that file store. So it's a nice and easy way to manage your data inside the Google. So what we just saw isn't a chatbot answering questions. It's a complete rag pipeline executing in seconds. Usually building this level of accuracy requires a complex stack. You need to set up a vector database, write scripts to split your PDFs into chunks, generate embeddings for each chunk, and manage the retrieval logic. With Google File Search, the entire backend is abstracted away. You simply upload the file and the Gemini handles the chunking, embedding and the storage automatically. And the best part? The cost is incredibly low. Storage and retrieval for the file search are free up to 1GB. You only pay a one-time indexing fee of roughly 50 cents per 1 million tokens when you upload the document. To put that into perspective, indexing a standard 100-page PDF costs less than 2 pence. Present in terms of pricing and setup complexity. For Google Gemini File Store, it's pretty much zero setup. All you have to do is upload the file and you're ready to go. For, for vector databases, it's low to medium because for Pinecone, it's a managed database, but it requires external embedding pipeline. It's also medium for Superbase because it requires managing Postgres and PG vector extension. Chucking and embedding is automatic in Google File Store, but it's manual in vector databases because you must, you must chunk your own text and generate embeddings. The storage cost is free up to one gigabyte, but both vector databases got their own free tiers up to two gigabytes and 500 megs respectively. But then if you need a plan, you need to pay per month. The indexing cost is 15 cents per million token, which is a one-time fee in terms of Gemini, but you pay separately for the embedding models for Pinecone and Superbase. The Gemini file store is best if you want instant RAG without complex infrastructure. Pinecone is pretty good for enterprise and performance and super base if you already have a Postgres and you need Vector. I really enjoy breaking down these complex AI topics for you here on the channel. But for me, the most exciting part is putting it all into practice. As a software engineer with over a decade of experience, I specialize in building custom systems. If you're ready to move from learning about AI to implementing it, I can help. You can find the first link in the description below to book a call. Let's see if we can work together.